Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. The probe demonstrates a deep periodontal lesion involving this maxillary molar. Treatment by gingivectomy would require the excision of a large area of palatal tissue. This would leave a raw, denuded surface which would take several weeks to granulate over. Therefore, a flap procedure will be performed using an internal beveled incision. After infiltration anesthesia has been obtained, the internal beveled incision is created. The blade is kept parallel to the tuberosity. Extended along the palatal surface of the molar, and carried anteriorly to the premolar. A vertical releasing incision is made distal to the premolar on the palate and connects with the incision on the crest. The palatal flap is now dissected from its underlying connective tissues. Care is taken to create a thin primary flap and avoid its perforation. Sutures have been placed through the flap to tie it to the teeth on the other side. This keeps the flap out of the way when the remaining tissue is dissected. A Goldman Fox number no. four curette is used in the palatal and mesial pockets around the molar tooth. The palatal tissue, distal to the last molar, is now dissected. The position of the knife permits a very thin flap to be dissected from its underlying submucosa. Again, the flap must be kept thin and perforation avoided. The number seven Goldman Fox gingivectomy knife is used to create two vertical releasing incisions from the tuberosity up toward the vestibular fornix. These incisions facilitate the reflection of the flap. Dissection is extended toward the fornix, exposing the underlying tissue distal to the molar. The scalpel is now placed in the pocket, carried around the tooth and across the edentulous area. The Goldman Fox number no. seven knife is used to remove the bulk of tissue from beneath the flap on the palatal aspect. This instrument is very effective for removing such tenacious, dense tissue. The greater curvature of this kidney-shaped knife permits the blade to cut when it is moved either backward or forward. The ocean bean chisel is used to enhance the reflection of the bulbous mass of tissue around the tooth. The tissue is grasped with a hemostat and dissected away.
This tissue is sometimes referred to as the secondary flap. The scalpel is now used to create a vertical releasing incision from the crest of the ridge to the vestibular fornix. The flap is separated from the dense underlying connective tissue. A periosteal elevator is used to reflect the buccal flap, which includes gingiva and alveolar mucosa. An angled beaver knife removes the pad of tissue on the ridge mesial to the molar. The ocean bean chisel separates the anterior border of this connective tissue pad, which is then removed. The Goldman Fox number four curette removes any tags of soft tissue which may be present in the area near the bony crest. A shallow infrabony pocket may be observed on the mesial and buccal surfaces of the molar tooth. Because of the bony ledge and shallow infrabony pocket on the buccal of the molar, the osseous tissue will be contoured with the cohen brenman rangeret This removes the ledge and permits the development of a physiologic gingival architecture. A slight spillway between the two buccal roots of the molar has also been created. A rotating diamond instrument is used to smooth the contoured bone and reduce the palatal shelf. The shallow infrabony pocket on the mesial of this molar is also eliminated at this time. It is important to note that water spray is used to prevent any excess heat in the area of the bony crest. Irrigation flushes out any debris particles which may be present on the area under the flap. The flaps are now repositioned and sutured. Excess length of the flap has been removed. No raw area is left exposed and all the underlying bony tissue is covered by the flap. A bare Sumner dressing is placed over the area and reinforced with the Goldman periodontal pack. This is placed completely around the molar and covered with adhesive surgical foil. The foil helps retain the periodontal dressing. The dressing is changed at the end of one week and usually changed again at the end of the second week. At a one and a half month post-operative interval, the tissue in the tuberosity region is healing. There is shallow, sulcular depth around the tooth and the form of the tissue is more physiologic than it was preoperatively. The patient has had an uneventful healing period and is now able to chew food properly and practice good oral hygiene in that area. In another month, a new restoration will be fabricated to restore the missing teeth in the area anterior to the molar. Tissue maturation should be complete before a new prosthesis is fabricated. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu license.